Without getting too much into politics, I should say that uh, this is not about politicians. This is barely about politics. This is about policy. This is about how crazy some people can get when their ideas are challenged, when their donors are challenged, and when the facts don't jive with what they have to say. Uh, let's talk about what happens when facts meet fiction. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> This week, uh, Lemon Tree is on vacation in Florida, visiting friends and family. So joining me instead is Mark from The Tesla Life. Lemon Tree, I hope you're getting your well-deserved rest. Does uh, a actually... Lemon Tree get uh, uh, discounts on airline flights? I assume so. They have to come from Amazon um, originally. I was uh, I brought it out for the party yesterday so everyone could, when they pulled up, would be like, oh, Itty bitty lemon tree. That's got to be the tree. place. Yep. And also there was a cardboard cut out of my face in the hedge, uh, <laughs> but at double scale. So that had to alarm a person or two who, as they were going by, were like, oh, I suspect I'm in either the very right place or the very wrong place. <laughs> it's a fine, it's a fine neighborhood. Apart from us, we are the ruffians. <laughs> So we've both seen this clip. If you uh, spend any amount of time on YouTube, you may have seen the clip. It's only a couple minutes long. We're just going to play it. I have sped it up ever so slightly so you can see what's going on here. Uh, this is uh, the secretary um, sharing uh, some thoughts. Now, recognizing that attempts to bribe the industry and the public into v EV adoption have literally failed at this point, continue mandating cafe standards, EPA tailpipe standards, that are de facto EV mandates. And ideological allies in 12 states are seeking to ban the sale of non-EV cars. Now, we can talk about the proper role of government. That'd be a great conversation because I don't think that we ha have the authority or should have the authority to, to, to limit what consumers can buy in this regard or what they can own. But clearly, Mr. Secretary, this isn't working. So I'm wondering, is there some point and if you've identified some point where you will stop, where the administration will stop, where the federal government will stop this requirement and let the market decide as opposed to the central planning model and this dictatorial policy. Well, thank you. Uh, given time is limited, I will confine myself to addressing the factually incorrect portions of what you have said, beginning with the assertion that EV sales are going down. They are, in fact, going up. Does that include every the government sales year, or, or private sales? Every single year, private sales more or government Americans sales, have purchased Mr. Secretary. EVs. The entire market. Uh, overall, the government's forced to buy them, so sales are going up, but the private sector. There are private sales, not. too. Yeah. I'd, I'd like those numbers. Sure. Uh, 1.2 million EVs were sold in the U.S. in 2020. How, how, many, how many government and how many private? We'll get you that breakout, but as you know, more private citizens buy EVs than uh, government purchases. No, I, second, I don't Let me that. Uh, don't address the second true. factual mistake in okay. your remarks, which was that EV costs are, are getting higher. They're, in fact, getting lower, and according to J.D. Power, have now reached parity or are slightly lower than with the or without subsidy, gas Mr. Secretary. With uh, or that without does, yeah, that does include the subsidy. That's right. Uh, but the point is they are going lower. Yeah, but they're not, because we're all buying statement that they are going up is incorrect. The third incorrect assertion you made is that uh, sales dropped in Q1. They did not drop compared to Q1 of the previous year. Of course, if you compare them to Q4, they drop because they always do because car sales are seasonal. But I, I would imagine most people are aware of that. And no, fourth, I'm talking about I want to address the EV, Q4 to Q1. EV, Maybe. not just overall car sales. Any car sales go down Q1 to Q4 because more people buy cars in Q4. But what I'm telling you is every single year, more Americans buy EVs than the year before. And the word tailspin is just a bizarre word to use for a growing sector of our economy. We also think that since that's the way that the market is headed, we should not allow China to build on the advantage that they developed during the Trump administration, not because they're environmentalists, but the, because they understand the economic power of trying to dominate the EV market. We want those EVs to be made in America, and increasingly they are. I'm happy to have them made in America, Mr. Secretary. What I'm not happy about is the mandate. America, the American people should be able to buy That brings me to the fourth and final that thing that uh, I need to I challenge as being factually inaccurate, which there is there is no mandate. You can purchase a gas car if you want to pay uh, uh, gas prices at the pump, but if you don't, you can purchase an EV with our help. So that was a lot of grandstanding is what that was. That was a lot of uh, soapbox preaching from the Republican congressman from the great state of Pennsylvania, which is oil and gas country. Uh, and by I mean natural gas. There's a lot of natural gas fracking in Pennsylvania. And it had been coal country for a long time. So what's going on, man? Uh, yeah. That was um, 
yeah, that, that was grandstanding. Absolutely. Um, he presented four facts that were not correct and uh, had to be corrected on each of them. Um, well, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. Yeah. Let me interrupt you. <laughs> my time is very limited, uh, Mr. Perry. I'm doing my best to answer your... No, no, no. Let me interrupt you. <laughs> That is what televised grandstanding is at its best. It's just someone trying to get in edgewise multiple times during your conversation or your ability to answer the question in the first place. It was very painful. Uh, well, let's go through them. Are EVs more expensive than gas cars before subsidies? Yes, currently. EVs are more expensive. So I guess it would depend on which EV, wouldn't it? I mean, what are we... It, Comparing apples to apples, I would I would say that there are dozens of models of pickup truck that are less expensive than an EV and only a couple models of pickup that are more expensive than an EV. That would be correct. I would say that's true. I would say that there are, in terms of premium sedans, there are plenty that cost more than the most expensive EVs, um, or at least within the range. You know, there are a lot of Sedans, there are a lot of premium electric sedans that are less expensive than their gas counterparts. If you're looking at like the Mercedes S500, those are very expensive vehicles. When you get down into the budget range, if you're looking, if you're calling a Model 3 a budget car, I think it's an unfair comparison because it has a lot of premium features that even premium cars in that segment don't have. But the average cost of everything has come down in the last three years. But EVs have come down much more sharply. Yes. Um, how many dollars of subsidy actually go in to keeping internal combustion engines uh, relevant? Well, you could talk about the, the biggest subsidy is just on the outskirts of the manufacturer. It's the subsidy for the actual oil and gas industry. So that's a subsidy that's definitely connected to the manufacturing of those cars. It's just not direct to the manufacturer. It's trillions. It's trillions. I see people in the comments all the time saying, well, I support, I def, I support EVs. I love them, love them. I just don't think that they should get any subsidies at all. And that's what I'm fighting for. And I say, you know, that's an interesting idea. Uh, things, something will always be subsidized. It's something somewhere. So before we attack any of the EV stuff, why don't we attack any of the oil and gas subsidies? And I mean any. Make them pay to clean up their messes instead of us doing it. Make them pay for, you know, a fair value on their uh, mineral rights. Uh, make them uh, fight their own wars. They won't. They can't. It's too expensive. They would they would close shop immediately. The mandate. Let's talk about the mandate. No, I'm not talking about taking you out to dinner, my friend. Uh, I mean, uh, what uh, what on earth is he talking about there? Well, apparently, uh, Mr. Perry believed that there is a mandate that everyone must buy an EV, no matter what type of vehicle they actually want. Unfortunately, the reality is that there is no such mandate. Um, yes, there's a rebate given for an EV, and there's no rebate given for a gas car, but it's up to the consumer to pick what they want to buy with their own money. Well, I'm going to push back because uh, a Toyota Prius is a gas car, and it has a rebate. Maybe not the Prius because the battery sourcing requirements, but hybrids are eligible for awfully generous incentives uh, despite being a uh, splody juice powered dino burners we know that's the facts but you're right it does have to have some amount of battery and i don't remember if it's seven kilowatt hours or 12 but it's a very small unserious battery maybe it's good for your daily commute if you're not plugging it in you're not really getting the benefit and a lot of people can't plug it in but i recognize there are a lot of people for whom evs can't work today they just can't. Uh, I would have argued with myself over this prior to my road trip, but I saw my buddy Larry would drive to visit his daughter in the next town. He'd charge up at home. He'd drive to his daughter's. But before he could drive back, he'd have to drive another 30 miles out of his way to charge and then drive back. Mm -hmm. uh, that's no longer the case for Larry, but it is the case for many throughout much of the country. Once you get a few hundred miles from the coast, uh, chargers start thinning out quickly. 
that's being addressed. It will continue being addressed. But EVs are not the automatic solution for everyone. But really, the, the problem here is he's saying there's a mandate. Mr. Perry right. is indicating that there is a mandate. And really, there is no mandate. Yeah, it's no. it's the consumer choice is still king. Choose what you want, spend your money on what you want, buy what you want. That's it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds easy when you say it. Now, how? But how many of those are government sales? Does he think that the entire increase is government sales? Because I, it sounds like that's what he's saying. I realize that the U.S. government is rather large compared to any other country, but. They're not buying more vehicles than the general public. So uh, as the secretary pointed out, we can get you those numbers of the breakout, but really last year's sales was 1.2 million vehicles in the US. So if EVs are not going down, we've got, uh, we've got an increasing market for them. And whether they're public or private or combination, the numbers are still going up. They are still going up. And I have not seen a lot of uh, EV mandates within government agencies. We know that there are some police departments, one by one, adding one or two cars. Not very many and not very often. Uh, and we are seeing sometimes, uh, uh, I imagine, motor pools. I've seen them add Chevy Bolts that they don't use very much, certainly don't make up the majority of their fleet. I don't see the shift to government fleet buying yet having an impact. Um, I don't know if you would see any of that being in, in Canada. Um, and I don't know how much of it I would see. I would think on the West Coast, I would see a lot of electric fleet vehicles from government agencies. I haven't noticed them. But the idea that they are making up the entirety of the increase in sales yeah. it doesn't make sense because they would want to buy US made EVs. And to add 200,000 units, um, apart from Tesla, US, U.S. manufacturers did not make that many. Uh, fun, fun little bit of math I noticed uh, yesterday was that if Tesla had made no cars in Q2, just the drawdown from the prior quarter's inventory was more than General Motors sold in EVs. So Tesla would still be number one in deliveries if they had made no cars last quarter in the for the U.S. market. Not a great look from from, and I'm and I'm a little surprised by that because I had it on good authority that Mary led, and it mattered. But I I, I guess I misunderstood. Mary's that's on leading me. from behind. <sighs> so from so far behind, that's leadership when you can't see the leader. Do you know why? companies like BYD are pushing so aggressively towards electrification. Yeah, because what they're trying to do is produce volume because of course volume drives down the cost of sale for each vehicle. They're trying to make more profit. The more vehicles they sell, the lower the cost uh, is for purchasing to put those vehicles together in the first place and the more profit there is available for those companies. But BYD was making hybrids. I think they were making even gas cars before that, perhaps. Certainly a lot of the Chinese automakers were making gas cars. Why are they pushing electric so hard? Well, because the country of China has put that as their top tier uh, issue. They want everyone to switch over to an electric vehicle platform so that the pollution can drop in large cities, so they can get the benefits of EVs, they can not have to import as much oil. All these pluses uh, would be fa fabulous for the country of China if they could get everyone to switch. So they're mandating it. There's the word. There is a mandate in China. That's why they're stampeding into the future while we're hanging back with the literal dinosaurs, with the literal ghosts of dinosaurs in our lungs. I think there might be a better way. I could be mistaken. Anything else on this one we needed to deconstruct? I would like to say that uh, Secretary Pete, uh, for whom I did not vote because he's never been on a ballot where I've been, I wouldn't have even had that choice. Um, I think composed himself very well in the face of a pretty obvious attempt at uh, muddying the discussion, talking over, filibustering. Um, I think he did a pretty good job. Is there anything else we need to mention on this? 
I noticed that uh, Mr. Perry seemed to be smiling quite a bit for the cameras <laughs> after his comments and uh, uh, the secretary's response uh, to uh, some of these uh, fictitious comments he was making. Yes, and I'm seeing if I can grab it without. Now, he was absolutely uh, smirking to himself at the very end. Yeah, there. He knows. He knows he got served. He knows. He knows. I I tried my thing and you got me the okay, you win this round. You win this round. But I'll be back to grandstand later. I'll be back to grandstand against someone else. I think I will ask for a different person from either your agency or a different agency who is less familiar with tactics <laughs> like these and may just let me steamroll them. Because I suspect, and I haven't looked into it, that this particular congressman may have interests uh donors who have interests in oil and gas and coal exploration that are asking him to throw up what roadblocks he can we're bringing this up not because we wish to become politicians i don't i don't know about you uh they i would i would absolutely do it but dog catcher is not an elected position in my town that's weird <laughs> strangely though coroner is Ooh. I don't want an elected coroner. That's weird. No, let's let's hire the best person. Coroner, what are you talking about? And actually, I don't remember if that's here or somewhere near here, but I did see a sign, someone running. I run from coroners. Ah, that's, as long as you run, they're, they're usually convinced it's not time to embalm. So. Uh, usually. But, well, that's why you got to vote against the other guy, because he does not share my belief that life ends at expiration. So, uh, yeah, I guess, hey, man, what are we doing here? So what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below. And remember, the whole point of this is not to say that um, we're pushing one side or the other. The side I'm pushing is facts. And Mr. Perry got the facts wrong. And uh, Secretary Buttigieg was patient enough to explain them in what I can only describe as a mic drop fashion, uh, right? So everybody else, like, subscribe, do what you got to do, smash some thumbs, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.